How about you? Wow, what a wonderful weekend. What a just a spectacular. Well, it was just wonderful. It was time off and and uh, we did all sorts of wonder. What are you eating, Christine? Are those uh, peanuts in a shell? What do you got? Are no, those pistachios. I, what are you? Yes. Okay, they're pistachios. Yeah. I have been addicted to these since I got back from Shasta. Oh, so for like a week or two? Yeah. Yeah, that's join the all, club. That's all I eat. Join the club. I've I'm been obsessed a, with them. I've been addicted for years now. Really? You, they come in different flavors. Have you sampled the different flavors of pistachio? I'm afraid don't. of going there. No, don't. <laughs> Honestly. Okay, first off, there's a salt and pepper. Oh. And that doesn't sound great. But no, it sounds amazing. It's amazing. Mm. Then there's like a like a like a um uh it's a red chili. <gasps> and I just close my pearls. And what? that's and that's my favorite. I don't even know cuz they don't carry the different flavor pistachios at my grocery store Whoa. In, in my neighborhood anymore. Oh, uh, where you go? No, no, don't tell me. Okay, you have to tell me cuz now you have to tell me. Well, I don't I don't get them cuz they're not at my grocery store. Oh. I don't I don't travel to other neighborhoods and go to strange grocery stores randomly shopping for pistachios. I would probably have to order the different flavored ones online. <gasps> but there's a whole other range of flavored pistachios that I never saw in Arizona that I know exist. If there were a chili lime kind, there, I'd lose there's my mind. all kinds. There's wasabi. I there's can't. Oh my god! Yeah, so I'm done for. I'll take a during a commercial break, Christine. Mm-hmm. I'll do a little pistachio research. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean, they're the greatest like little food, and they're super good for you. Are I they? found out. Yeah, yeah well, especially, they are. especially when you eat them by the ton. Yeah, I try not to do that. <laughs> yeah, I make a bag last a week. I'm doing all right. Uh, I could never do that because yeah. once I get a bag, it's gone. I am amazed at my <laughs> self control with the pistachios, but yeah. since Chasta, like, because they're great for the, being on the boat. Because they're just, you know, just grab them and, you know, you're always going, I was going out like on the speedboat. Plus speed you could spit the shells out in the water and the fish think it's food. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask. Is that, that what you did? And they no, come never. up and they're no. like, nope, nope, this is it. Ow. Oh, you caught me? Nope, I never oh. would do that. <laughs> no, no. They're biodegradable. It's fine. Sunflower seeds work good on a lake like that too. I may have thrown some on the shore. Whatever. <laughs> but never in the water, no. Uh, there's guys on the golf course that spit sunflower seed shells on the putting greens. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, they should They should all be forced to serve life sentences in prison. So that's, I mean, I don't know why, but I hate that. Yeah, I do too. I mean, I mm-hmm. get it. Yeah, that's biodegradable, no, and, no, but not, it's I, also I, just I, dirty. Don't, don't spit it on the putting green. Spit yeah. it on the fringe uh, alongside the putting green, not on the green itself. I find it very... Um, you don't play golf, Christine. No, so. but it's weird that, <laughs> su- that it's such a dignified game, and it used, like you say, it's like dignified. an honor game. It's a dignified game unless you're playing at a county track, then it's guys with cut-off jeans and, and, and wife beaters. Right, but you're telling me they're <laughs> spitting on the nice ones. Oh, the yeah. nice golf course. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. bizarre to me. Uh, That's gross. I don't. It's... Uh, uh, I, I remember uh, being a kid and watching a baseball game with my old man. It was the Houston Astros. They played in the Houston Astrodome. Mm-hmm. And the baseball players were sitting in the dugout spitting tobacco juice on the field. Right. And I remember my old man saying, they're spitting indoors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we were watching baseball last night, me and my boyfriend. and he Which game? Did... Which game? Oh, Do- Dodgers? I'm sure it was. Doyers? I'm sure it was the Dodgers. I, I just found out Dodgers that's fan. how the, uh, the Spanish people pronounce Dodgers. Wow. Doyers. Do- Doyers. Mm-hmm. Doyers. That's Lo- true. Los Angeles Doyers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh, what happens when the Doyers play the Giants? <laughs> <laughs> how do they pronounce angels? Uh, on Angel. 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 Gels. Okay. Angel. So he's and he's talking to me. He goes, who, Wait. who? Who's talking yo, to you? Yo, yo, yo. Who's he's, that? My boyfriend. Oh, for, those, who, to for me. those that don't know. Oh, Okay. For people that are listening that don't know who Yoey is. Right, right. Yeah. I just said my, I earlier, I said my boyfriend and I were watching. I know, but we had a quick aside. So okay. I was getting everyone Bring caught back, back up. Yeah. Well, anyway, and he was <laughs> losing his mind about like, we're still letting them t- chew tobacco products okay. in the, right. on the round. I can't. This is, no. Weird, huh? I'm not doing this. Isn't that weird? No, it's not weird. Who's, who, who uh, Yoey is saying it's weird that they're letting baseball players chew tobacco? Yeah. Okay. We have banned it on everything. I don't know why that's weird. We've banned it. You can't, you, like, there are certain hours you can't smoke on television. 
There's yeah, hours no, that a, this is um, this is like a players' union thing. Uh, I don't know who's going to ban it from them. Is it going to be Major League Baseball? Yeah, I would they have think. to negotiate with the players' union, and oh. the players' union's like, mm, okay, you've already banned tobacco in the minor leagues. These are the big boys. Uh-huh. They right. want to be able to have a chaw in. Yeah, they're see. millionaires. It's part of the tradition in it a way, is. and it's, it's their personal choice. Obviously, yeah. a nicotine addiction is not going to make you a better athlete, but yeah. they choose to do that. That's on them. Yeah, and they're and they're big boys. They're millionaires. They want to be able to, you know, uh, I'd like to see um, Major League Baseball ban jewelry. Oh, yeah. He wants yeah. that, too. I'm sick and tired of seeing 50 chains on a dude's neck. Well, okay. okay so Yoey thinks that this is a cultural thing and they'll never they, be able to do no, it. No, they won't. It is. He's right. It is a cultural thing. Mm-hmm. And they won't. It's not that they'll. They're not even going to try. Mm-hmm. And again, it's the it's the the players union. It's not the league itself. The players union says, hey, these are our players. They want to wear these chains. It's a cultural thing. Shut up. And MLB goes, oh, yeah. All right. Yeah. You always got gold. Yeah. <laughs> He's got a lot of it. But I just think it's uh, problematic. I mean, how many times do we have to see a, a, a runner trying to steal second base and his diamond gold, his diamond falls chain apart. falls apart? We saw that. And yeah. then there's like 20 guys looking for d- tiny diamonds on the baseball field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're right. not that tiny, but yeah. <laughs> I'd say you steal base from me, I get to steal your chain. It's only fair. Yank. Eye well, for an eye. There's that rule in the NFL that if your hair is longer than out the back of your helmet, they'll grab it. Yeah. And it's okay for them to grab it. It's part of your uniform now. Right. You want to have hair that long? Okay. Look at you with sports facts. I know well, stuff, no. guys. She says she knows stuff, but it's just because she hangs out with a boy. I hang out and with she, lots and, of boys. I hang and, out with you two and dorks. She, and she listens to what they say, and then she passes it off as her own knowledge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I watch a lot of ESPN in my house, though. There's a lot of that. Uh, I got. Uh, I did nothing this weekend. Absolutely nothing. Friday night I went to bed at eight thirty. Saturday night I went to bed at eight thirty. I went to bed at eight thirty last night. Mm-hmm. Saturday morning I woke up at three thirty and was kind of out of sorts for a couple hours. Yeah. Uh, Saturday morning and I, uh, I woke up at uh, five thirty. I was able to sleep in a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, this morning I overslept. Yeah. So it only takes me like a couple of days of just. Uh, not having my sleep disturbed by humans, animals, or alarm clocks, mm-hmm. that I was able to sleep like nine hours. <gasps> That's incredible. But, uh, oh my God. but I didn't get out of the house. I didn't do any. I didn't play golf. I didn't go anywhere. Uh, so I yesterday, in the middle of the day, I decided to get rid of the beard. And uh, This I, is what happens when you're bored, by the way. Well, this yeah. is what happens when I got uh, nothing but time. I thought it always, this is always, every, 100% of the time how it starts out when someone gets rid of a beard. Mm-hmm. It starts off with, let's give it a little trim. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mess that up real quick. Yeah. So once the trimming started, well, F it. And the whole thing's gone. <laughs> I can't believe it. I, I love your face. I've never seen it. I don't like the shape of my head. Really? Yeah, I don't like it. I was looking at myself in the mirror this morning, and I go, I can't, I, this beard can't come back fast enough. Yeah. I think you look great. I've got like just Oh, a, she's so nice. Yeah, I do. It's, what? Uh, it's a, just like a round, pudgy, double chin. Yeah. Oh, come on. And here, Brad, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, can no. see, I see the side profile, dude. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you need that beard, bro. And then my wife this morning, she goes, oh, God, I'm so jealous. What are you talking about? Well, you can grow your beard back and cover up your double. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, I don't have enough chin screws for that. <laughs> He's like, you know, a good way to actually, another good way to hide the double chin is sit right here. You can't see it. Oh. Mm-hmm. Another good way is to maybe lose some weight. There's, I guess, There's yeah. that. Oh, that. chestnut. Drop a few pounds. Whatever. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I keep weighing myself. It's not going down anymore. I don't know. Really? I guess I'm supposed to do things to make it go down, like eat less. <laughs> yeah, you're supposed to, like, all the late night cereal. Mm-mm. You're not supposed to do that. I only had one bowl of late night cereal last night, so. <gasps> oh, you're doing good. And cutting back. Man, yo, we got crap cereal, so now I don't want it. Never heard of that brand before. I know, it's terrible. No, it's just generic cornflakes. Not corn, sugar, I'm sorry. whatever, frosted I'm sorry. Flakes. Who are you dating? yo Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he bought you generic cereal? Yes. hmm Ew. You need to have a conversation with him. I almost broke up with him. Yeah, listen. I'm so mad. Listen, if you want this thing to last yeah. beyond this weekend, mm-hmm. stop by me. Generic yeah. cereal. Yep, I know. I need to be like, <laughs> listen, we need to have a hey girl. No, you, Sit down. Mm-hmm. Listen, uh, you need to train him. Yes. <laughs> okay, he blamed me for the generic cereal. He said if you had brought your phone. If you had more money. To Safeway. He goes, you would have downloaded the app and we could have had $1.99 Captain Crunch. But instead. What? No. Yeah. 
Oh, so you gotta, people are really doing this. I see there's a thing, uh, when I go to the grocery store, hey, download this app. You can zap all your barcodes while you're shopping and then you can just walk out. Oh, yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. You can do that. And there's coupons built into it and stuff. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's garbage. It's pretty cool. Well, and then I see, but there's always somebody at the grocery store who's asking for help. I downloaded this and I can't get it to work. Yes, that's true. Uh, I, <laughs> I've I'm, seen that a lot. Yeah, I'm <laughs> a lot of, uh, definitely not going to be one of those people. People that don't get it. I can't figure it out. Dude, you know people are going to be skimming with that app as well. Like, what's to prevent them from scanning 9 out of 10 items they put in their bag? Yeah, that's true. Well, I think maybe they just assume there's going to be a little bit of a loss. And they just, uh. you know, go, well. Oh, oh how, about they've got, business. how about they've got private secret security cameras uh, installed in every single grocery cart? Oh, and, and there's little and there's little people. There's like a whole bank of little people that are monitoring computers. <laughs> but why do I they have to steal. be tiny? Why can't they be regular? Yeah, I would <laughs> steal just to see a group of little people Cause, chase after me. Because right. little people have a hard time. They're not chasing after you. Oh no, they're just monitoring screens. You don't understand. Little people struggle to move. No, that's not true. They do. Yeah, but they, they 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 struggle to move quickly. Yeah, uh, I've seen some pretty athletic little people. Okay. Yeah, well, so, right. it's, it's, it's the same thing with regular humans. There's always going to be your anomalies. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. There's always going to be like a little person if they were just a two two three inches taller could have been an Olympian. All of my dwarf <laughs> friends have had. Well, now we're all in middle age. Um, and but they all have physical problems. Just say, th just say though, you're one dwarf friend. No, I have three. No, you have three. I have three. No. Yes, I do. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever tried to stack them up on top of each other to make one normal friend? So, so we can go to a movie? <laughs> no. This is, this is like the having worked with a little person for a decade. I can't even begin to tell you how hack these comments are that you're making. Oh, whatever. It's so old. So old, you've got to come up with he's, something better. He's only saying that because he he made them like ten years ago. Yeah, 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 yeah. He said all this already ten years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, when it he was, was working with the no, little person. But, but it was it was twenty years ago. Yeah. Ah, I know. Not, Good times. Not ten years ago. Mm -hmm. But I used to tell the little guy this all the time. I the go, little guy. Mm -hmm. I go, tussles hair. Yeah, well, I, and I that. would say, you know, you're a freak of nature, right? Oh, and he got no, I'm not. I'm like, dude, I'm not saying this to be mean, but just really? as a, but just as a matter of fact. <laughs> You are. You. I mean, look at everyone else. Everyone else's normal height. You're not on that criteria alone. You're a freak it's, of nature. I can hear it. That means he's special. So funny. Oh. You hear that? I yeah, know. isn't that it's like weird? A, it's like big. Um, uh, you have the loudest one like, I've ever heard. It's like slamming on the brakes, uh, like like a hundred yards before the stop sign. <laughs> is what it's like. Sorry. I'm, I'm not going to vape on Mike for the rest of the show. You don't have to vape on. You can vape all you want. Just not on Mike. Just on Mike. Just I know. Just not on Mike. I get it. There you go. This is, this is my impression of Brad for the past month. Oh, uh, here we go. <sighs> <laughs> hey, how's it going, everybody? <laughs> how's it going, everybody? Stop it. It's like, keep talking. I'm fully engaged. Yeah, this yeah, is yeah. I got you. Yeah, I'm over here in my vape lounge. We're sitting around. If we were sitting around having a conversation off air, it'd be the same thing. So, you know, we're in. And now, in our society, we call this Frank Show Entertainment News. Woo! All right, I think it was Saturday night. I looked at my wife and I said, hey, wait, uh, isn't there a movie out this weekend? I know there was something I wanted to see. Oh, yeah, Quentin Tarantino. Yeah. Uh, Did you see it? No. No, nah, me neither. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I didn't do nothing. I do want to see it, though. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was not number one at the box office. It came in at number two. Oh. Looks like it took in $40 million, though. It's uh, still a win for Quentin Tarantino. It's the biggest box office weekend for him out for of him all ever, shows. yeah. I mean, The Lion King was number one at $75.5 I don't know how you top The Lion King. Right. Oh, yeah. But Lion so, King was down over $100 million over the next week. The previous week, they made $100 million more. Uh, so that was second weekend out for Lion King? Yeah. Uh, Spider-Man Far From Home, uh, number three. Toy Story 4 at number four. And Crawl at number five. What is Crawl the horror flick? Yep, the gator movie, right? Okay, yeah. I think uh, Mommy and Sam want to go see Crawl. Mm. They, uh, they, they love the horror f flicks. Chucky, Bobby, and me, yeah. my 11-year-old, uh -huh. and we go, eh, we, we don't get anything out of the horror films. <laughs> Nothing? Man, I don't really get anything out of them. Man, I saw a horror film last year, Heredit Heredity. That's the one that my wife wants to see. Whoa. Yeah. yeah. Man. I'll, that... go, I'll go see that. 
Do it's, it. It's not in theaters anymore. Well, it's still a home rental. We'll rent it at home. Yes, it is. It's a good home rental, yeah. but make sure, you know, lock the doors. It's well, creepy. The wife did see it, actually. It's scary. And she told me it wasn't as creepy as she was expecting oh, it to be. Oh, really? Well, well I because saw I, built, it in the theater. I built it up with her. Oh, you did? I go, oh, uh, yeah, we talked to her, and he's like, oh, this is the biggest uh, uh, scary movie since Rosemary's Baby. Yeah. I, well, I saw it in the theater, and I was just, I couldn't sleep for two days. It's, it really um, freaked me out. If there, oh, who's on line one? Terry, he saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, good. Ooh. I was just going to ask for someone to call in that saw the film. Terry, what would you think? Oh, it was horrible. Oh, yeah. It really was. It's just, you're going to be really disappointed. It was three hours long. And, okay. Well, that uh, does, hold on. Let me back up because I got questions. Uh, okay. Uh, what, what other Tarantino films have you seen and enjoyed? All of them. Okay. Wow. Uh, what's your favorite Quentin Tarantino film, Terry? has to be Pulp Fiction. All right. Um, and then this one, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, what didn't it have that the other Tarantino films had? Well, again, it, it didn't seem like one of his films, and uh, it was didn't seem to make sense the whole way, and the, the only good part was the end where, you know, people get... Wait, uh, spoiler armed. alert. Spoiler <laughs> alert. You don't want to say the end of the film, Terry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the only good part's the end where everyone dies. Yeah, yeah. But, no, you know, no, don't say it, man. Aside from that... <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Terry. All right. Wow. <laughs> Jerk. So he liked all of Tarantino <laughs> movies except for this one. Yeah, yeah that kind of concerns me. Me too. Uh, it doesn't concern me. I, both of you. Neither one of you should be concerned. Are you kidding me? Why? Get out of here. Seems like it's not that good. Uh, it, I, I can tell by the sound of Terry's voice. He's not a good uh, arbiter of Tarantino films. Yeah. All right. All right? He well, liked them all. He I, liked them all, but I, this one. I've been doing this long enough that I can tell just by the sound of Terry's voice, he's not to be trusted. Oh, oh come on. And he said he liked them all. I mean, uh, again. I, I didn't even really like Kill Bill. So uh, what am I going to do with this? Oh. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Actually, it took, it took me a couple watches to really appreciate Kill Bill, and I, I do love Kill Bill. Yeah, it's, it's good series. stuff. Yeah. Uh, I love I love getting an update on Woodstock 50. Oh, isn't this fun? <laughs> this is almost reached This is almost reached like a uh, fire festival level. Oh, no. I love it because it's like it's like a, the personification of Lindsay Lohan. I just uh, love a mess. It's a, in, <laughs> it's a Rolling Stone article, and the article is titled Inside Woodstock 50's Last Ditch Maryland Attempt. Yeah. Howard County Executive Calvin Ball is optimistic that Meriwether Post Pavilion could host anniversary event, though many obstacles remain and acts are dropping from this event like flies. No, stop it. Yeah. This is no. Why do they keep wanting? Why do they want to do? They don't have insurance. Is that it? What's going on? Uh, yeah, nobody wants. <laughs> the acts are dropping like flies. And now they're at the point where they say that the tickets might just be free. Uh, yeah, you think? <laughs> like the original Woodstock, though. A lot of people just walked in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, once it started and the, the fences were worthless. Right. But like people just let other people in. And, in, yeah. in. In recent weeks, organizers have been denied permits four times in Vernon, New York, where they attempted to move the beleaguered festival from, a, from its original proposed site of Watkins Glen International. And with no venue in place, they have yet to put tickets on sale. Oh, they haven't even sold tickets yet. But much oh. like the original Woodstock, they may be granted a reprieve at the 11th hour on Thursday with a mere three weeks to go. Columbia, Maryland's Meriwether Post Pavilion emerged as the fest's possible savior. Um, uh, Meriwether Post Pavilion is also an alternative act, isn't it? I, no. Uh, <laughs> Meriwether Post Pavilion. No, I feel like it's a, my morning jacket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a good band name, but I, I think, don't think it I exists. think it is a band name. Okay. Let me, uh -huh. <laughs> are you going to Google it? Uh, Meriwether Post Pavilion Band. Because you've got the venue. Let's see if it comes up as a band. Who? Uh, an outdoor concert venue. Oh, no, no, I've got it. It's okay. not a band, it's an album title. By a band called Animal Collective. Oh, they've got okay. A, they've got an album titled Meriwether Post Pavilion. There you go. And, anyway. yeah. and I own the album, and I enjoy the album. Well, that's why you knew the answer. But I didn't know it was a concert venue. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> there you go. We're learning something new every day. Brad and I both throw out a, a non-committal, non-enthusiastic, yeah. Yeah. Am I the only one that feels really bad for Jessica Alba? 
What happened? I like I like talking about Jessica Alba. Well, she's pretty and she's rich. Yeah, and she likes sex. Well, I say that because she's got babies. Yeah, so she's at least done it two, three times. Yeah, yeah. Well, a hacker posted hateful and bigoted tweets from Jessica Alba's Twitter account this weekend. Oh, whoa. Messages uh, posted on her account read, Nazi Germany did nothing wrong, and that's on God, in word. <gasps> uh-huh. Another read, ugh, police signs in the distance again. Will When will ends stop committing crimes so I can get some effing sleep? Oh. Whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa. And people are like, look at this, like, damn, Jessica Alba, what the hell? What you drinking? Yeah, I think every, I think everyone saw these tweets and thought Jessica's gone off the deep end. Not me. I knew immediately it was a hacker. Yeah. I followed Jessica. When I saw these tweets, I said, that doesn't sound like my Jessica. Wait, do you really follow her? No, no you don't. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, that would be a big surprise. I'm pretty sure she blocked him. Uh, others included <laughs> offers to pay $50,000 to kill handicapped homosexuals. Thankfully, the messages were removed from her account early Sunday once the hack was discovered. Following prey to Twitter trolling is somewhat new to Jessica Alba, who lamented in the past about being a target for a different kind of harassment. Sexual advances from older men. Oh, that's got to be rough, Jessica. Yeah. Oh, man. Like older guys that think you're pretty. Whoa. (laughs) No, it's not. You know, it's worse than that. It's not just people think she's pretty. Well, I'm older. I'm older, and I think she's pretty. Yeah. Why, am, am I, am I uh, a scourge to her? Yes. Yes. Yeah, see? Well, why can't, <laughs> I, why can't I comment then? Just keep it to yourself. I'm doing a radio show. That doesn't really work, does it? No, yeah. I mean, don't tell her personally. <laughs> well, I, that'll never happen. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's there not calling it. I don't have her booked anytime soon. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, oh, hey, listen. I don't know why this is coming up in news now after all these years. But something tells me that the widow of Casey Kasem is a little crazy. She's nuts. I love talking about her. I don't care what time of year She's it is. Cuckoo. <laughs> Whatever. She's cuckoo. Uh-huh. Uh, Jean Kasem has filed a wrongful death suit against the late radio legends attorney, Samuel D. Ingham III. This is, uh, how long ago did Casey pass? It's been five years now. Right. At least, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. at least. What is she doing now, all these years, filing a wrongful death lawsuit five years later? She ran out of money. Oh, right. Good call. Uh, uh, yes. It says right here, it's just the latest legal salvo and a string of suits and the allegations since the star's 2014 death. In new court documents, Gene accuses Ingham of conspiring with Kasem's adult kids to isolate and kill Casey for financial gain. Um, no, that was you. That was her. I think she did that. There's a lot of projection going on with this lawsuit, it seems like. It would seem to me. I mean, uh, if I had to guess who was uh, guilty uh, of that. Jean has brought in former L.A. Chief Prosecutor Becky James to fight her case. The new suit filed in L.A. County claims that Ingham and Casey's older adult children ensured that Casey starved to death in a strange hospital far from home without his wife for more than three decades and youngest daughter by his side. Okay. So, oh, he took Casey. They wouldn't let him eat. Uh (laughs) Uh-huh. Wait, but I thought she took him. Yeah. There, there was that was the case for a little bit where the kids were going against her because she kind of kidnapped him. She and did. Was, she yeah. took him to like Amsterdam or something. The suit alleges Ingham was hired to advocate for Casey's interests, but was instead an active participant in this horrifying plot to end Casey's life for financial gain. To that end, he performed actions that were far outside the bounds of any conceivable representation of Casey. Hey, geez, uh, I'm sorry, but this Jean, I'm looking at a photo of her. Mm-hmm. She's got Psycho tattooed on her forehead. Oh, yeah. Look, look at that face. No, it's just, um, yeah, and look how big that forehead she, is. That's why I said <laughs> she's got billboard. psycho tattooed all over it. Oh, hey, man. I think there's some science to my ability to pick out crazy just from a person's facial expression. Oh, uh, yeah. I think there's some science or to it. Or lack of facial expression. She's just had too much work done, and it's weird. I think it's the smile in the eyes. Mm-hmm. Look at how much white you can see. Yeah, that's not okay. It's weird. That's weird. That's her yeah. eye, eyes are way too big. Mm-hmm. I know in native cultures, they used to say that if you can see white all around someone's eye, mm-hmm. stay away. Oh, yeah. That means, that means it's crazy. It's a good indication something's mm-hmm. gone sideways. Muy loco. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that has I not agree. changed over the years. Mm. All right, so uh, Gene Kasem is a psycho. Jessica Alba is adorable. 
Uh, number one movie at the box. Oh, what is this? Who's Jake Paul and Tana Mongu? Who is this, Brad? I don't know who these people are. Jake Paul is this big YouTuber. My daughter loves him. Pe- and PewDiePie or whatever. Is no, that him? He's, no, no, he's not PewDiePie. He, he's, he's his brother. No, no. There's Logan Paul. No, they're not no. related. Okay. They, they look similar, but there's Logan Paul and Jake Paul. They were uh, both Disney actors, child actors, oh. who turned into world-class D-bag YouTubers, making a ton of money. And they got uh, Jake Paul got married uh, to his girlfriend in two months over the weekend in Las Vegas. You say that like you don't agree with uh, marriage after such a short courting period. Well, yeah, he's only twenty two and she's twenty one. So yeah, and yeah, they're millionaires. Even yeah. Logan Paul, Jake's older brother, is saying that this whole thing is staged. So she kind of oh like, oh oh staged yes of course right. they're YouTubers they stage everything right there's nothing that happens in these people's lives that aren't staged mm, and so they got this over the top wedding and of course it turned into a full blown brawl because you know when you, because it was staged well you heard a bunch of well some people are saying that but you heard a bunch of douches and young kids together with right. alcohol that's gonna happen and, and, and it's all staged in Vegas and, yeah. yeah. Uh, all right I'm over it. <laughs> a guy legitimately got knocked out though, so if they staged that. Hey, I got. Did you see the 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 the, the British uh, cruise ship where a massive brawl happened? No, and it all started because someone was dressed up as a clown. Yeah, what? <laughs> no, so, there's a bunch of a hole Brits on some stupid a hole British cruise line. And they're like, oi, and they're all like partying oi. and drinking, and then some jerk shows up in a clown suit and starts smashing people. Why are you wearing that clown <laughs> costume? Well, well, someone got <laughs> upset <laughs> because they didn't realize that it was like a dress up event, and so they're like, well, you left my clown suit back in the cabin. Oh, is that what it was? I don't know. No. Back to the Frank Show now on 96.1 KLPX. All right. What's the stupid question, Christine? I really kind of like it. Okay. It's on Reddit. If you were given a a device that could show you everyone who has ever had a crush on you without your knowledge, would you use it? No. Why or why not? Without their knowledge. No, I mean, I misread. It's without your... Well, I mean, they wouldn't know either. They already know they have a crush on you, but you would. they wouldn't know that you knew. The, the, yeah, but the, you need the knowledge to know, right? He's saying, yes. They're the, saying the, the question is, if you could have a device that would let you know everyone that's ever had a crush on you and those people would never know yeah. that you know, right. would you do it? Yeah. As a nearly 50-year-old guy, I don't see the point. Uh, if I'm in my 20s, yeah, sure, why not? Wouldn't uh, you be curious? Well, it would also make me sad. Mm-hmm. What, are these glasses that I put on and then the people that have a crush on me glow green or something? I don't know. I'll never see a green glow. Oh, that would make come me on. very sad and disappointed. No, you get probably a couple glows around the building here, but All it wouldn't right. be for it people you be, want. And from anyone attractive. I I think <laughs> I, I don't know, man. There have been times though where like years later people would say, I had the biggest crush on you oh, and yeah. you didn't like me. Yeah, that happened to me. And I I mean yeah. that happens to me all the time. Right. Hasn't yeah. it happened to you guys? It has happened to me. I don't know. No? no I didn't. Nobody ever says I really liked you? I'm pretty sure I dated everyone who's liked me. Yeah. I told I Frank that I had a crush thing. on Yoey before anybody knew. He was the first person I told. Right. I burdened him with that horrible uh, knowledge. I'm already over this segment. <laughs> this is like a dumb segment now. I think it's funny. I'm sorry I asked you to bring it up. All right. It's your fault. Yeah, yeah it I is on know. you. I, I apologized. Uh-huh. I, I don't need you after an apology to point fingers and say it's my fault. No, I'm continue. Continue. Are you just upset because you don't think you have that many crushes? I don't know, Brad. I think, you know, it would upset you if you saw someone uber hot. You're like, damn it. I had a chance at you and didn't didn't know it? No. No, I'm not. I don't live in a fantasy world. I know better. All right. No, yeah. maybe that happened. You don't know. Oh, oh, you're right. I don't. Okay. You don't know. <laughs> doesn't matter to him now anyway. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Why? If it mattered, why didn't they say something back then? Yeah. Now, uh, I'm glad they didn't say anything because re- since they didn't say anything, they're jerks anyway. So you're saying your answer is no. You never want to know who likes you. Uh, I don't see the point. Ignorance is bliss. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm kind of digging not knowing. You know why? Because there's nobody anyway. So you don't all, know that. Okay, you're right. I don't know anything. No, I'm gonna but tell the you point what. is, is if I had this device and I found out how few people had crushes on me, I'd be sad all the time. 
I think if I found out a couple people like liked me and uh, uh, the woulda coulda shouldas, yeah, I yeah. might I might be looking looking for them on Facebook. That's true. Sometimes you have feelings for somebody and you get too in your head where you don't even make the move. And to know if that person had the same feelings would be crushing. It's a, it's, yeah. I, it's there, a was meltdown. A, there was a girl that I was crazy over for like a year and a half. Mm-hmm. And then she and she buys me a ticket to fly to her city and we spend the weekend together. Oh my God, that's amazing. She asks me, can we have sex? And I wasn't ready. No. I, I, I was uh, such in, in crush with this girl that I didn't want to like ruin it by having sex right so she asked hey <laughs> gay no. uh she asked can we have sex and, uh, and then we do it and then that was the last time we ever talked because <gasps> <laughs> i wasn't ready i told you i wasn't ready i need to stretch first yeah it's your fault what do you mean you weren't ready <laughs> what does that mean for a man i don't know i wasn't um i liked her too much yeah, yeah. exactly that's the thing you put it on a pedestal game over yeah so it was just too you were weird? You were nervous? Uh, yeah, sure. I'm probably too all quick? those things. Oh, absolutely too quick. Oh, yeah. Man. And probably too small. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, sad that's, friend. Yeah, yeah, that's how it sounded. <laughs> and you know what? I see this ah. I see this woman on social media now and I see who she's married to and the guy couldn't be more unattractive. <gasps> but I go I it makes perfect sense. After having sex with her one time, right? I know what this guy's packing. Oh, come on. No. Yeah. No, she, yeah. if anything, she had a type and you missed your opportunity. No. Yeah. Yeah. My, yeah. Her type is she's a size queen. No. Yes. No, yes. she just probably likes ugly people. And, and, <laughs> and Giant Johnson. No, she just has if bad she likes taste ugly, in men. If she likes ugly people, that's why she banged me once. So I was only half her type. <laughs> uh, ugly and small wang. You're just nice, so she's giving you a chance. Well, she gave me a chance, but whatever. Yeah, oh, you man. know, at least it was a notch, a half notch or a uh, notch. I had to listen to Erica Badu the whole time, too. <gasps> hey. oh. Whether he's ready or not. Frank! Now back to the Frank Show on 96.1 KLPS. All right, there's a question to be asked here, but I don't think it's the right question. I think the question needs to be fixed a little bit. Okay. Okay, the question is, who's more evil, Russia or Apple? Ooh. Okay, now, that's a great question, but here's where I think the question uh, should be changed. Okay. Uh, Who's more evil? Uh, I've lost my place. Where'd it go? I know what you're going to say. Where'd it go? I'm going to write it down. Where where did it go? Russia or Apple? Oh, here it is. Who's more evil, Russia or or Facebook. I knew you were going to say Facebook. <laughs> it's Facebook. It, uh, Russia. It, um, in, in terms of level of evilness, it's Russia, Facebook, and then everyone else is a distant third. Sure. As yeah. far as I'm concerned. Uh-huh. As far as I'm concerned. Right. Uh, Russian hackers have built a fake version of Pornhub for Android. You got to get off Android, Christine. Uh, Why? Yeah, people, well, because it's the it's easily hackable, apparently. Uh, so P- Russians wanted people to download these uh, fake Pornhub for Android so then they could access their data. I don't watch porn on my phone. You just sent us screenshots of Pornhub last night. No, it, but I wasn't on Pornhub. She wasn't, my friend sent that to yeah, me. Yeah, her friend sent uh, that. That's his yeah, Pornhub. That's his Pornhub. <laughs> Um, so this is, uh, so you do have to be careful what apps that you download, though, mm-hmm. especially if you're in the caucuses. Are you in the caucuses anytime soon, Christine? I don't know what that is. Oh, the caucuses. Well, that'll be over in uh, Eastern Europe, I believe. Like in the... Caucus Mountains? Yeah, like oh, in the... Oh, geography. In no. the Shreb- Srebrenica, Herzegovina region and uh, Yugoslavia. I uh, have no comedy tours there no. in recent months coming. No. Somebody's packaging powerful malware in fake versions of popular Android apps like Skype. Wow. Signal. Pornhub. This is according to a new cybersecurity firm called Lookout has released this report. Uh, dubbed Monocle, the malware can exfiltrate data from third-party applications by reading text displayed on a device's screen at any point in time. Whoa. Uh, also, also, Monocle seeks root access. And I'm reading this. I don't know what root access means, but that's the most privileged level of control. Uh huh. When the malware achieves root access, it's able to overwrite security certificates to intercept and probably change incoming and outgoing information, sometimes called a man in the middle attack. 
Uh, but yeah. it can operate and steal data even when it cannot access root access. This allows the software to be incredibly flexible and useful in multiple operational scenarios. So uh, it goes on further in this piece to say that a firm that's closely linked to GRU, which is Russian military intelligence. Oh, okay, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, th- th- is the company that's coming up with these uh, apps. So how is this related to Apple? Or face well, like well, uh, I mean, because, why is Apple like this? Because Russia's. well, on the one side you've got Russia who's creating malware so they can get into your phones and steal all your data. Uh, Apple uh, is able to eavesdrop on whatever it is you're asking Siri for. Yeah, so it doesn't matter what you download; they already have access. Right. Well, when you're asking Siri for stuff. Right? Everybody asks Siri for stuff on their phone. Oh, Mm -hmm. well, most of the time I just type in a text Google search. But the fact is Siri's listening 24-7 whether you ask it or not. Sex noises. What? People people at Apple are even hearing your sex noises a lot of times. What? Yep. I don't know if they're able to hear when you don't ask for Siri. I don't know. Yeah, they absolutely can. Just turn on your microphone. Always. Yeah. Your microphone is never off. You you can, I think you can in, in, uh... And uh, your your configurations, I think you can turn it off. Yeah, there's a, there's a configuration to give you a false sense of security, but the fact of the matter is, it is they never can, off, no matter what you do. Apple contractors on. regular okay. uh, Apple contractors regularly hear, hear confidential medical information, drug deals, and recordings of couples having sex as part of their job, providing quality control or grading the company's Siri voice assistant. What? Although Apple does not explicitly disclose in its consumer-facing privacy documentation, a small portion of Siri recordings are passed on to contractors working for the company around the world. (gasps) They're tasked with grading the responses on a variety of factors, including whether the activation of the voice assistant was deliberate or accidental. Um, This is kind of similar to what they do uh, with radio stations across the country. Hmm. There are companies that have employees that are given our emailed audio files from radio stations every single day. Uh, and then that employee will go through and listen to the audio files, mm-hmm. which will contain maybe 10 seconds from every broadcast minute. And they'll determine what song is played. This is all by human ear. Oh, whoa. Yeah, and so that's how they determine a lot of times wh- how many times a record gets played. Uh, they'll use this information to then determine royalties to an artist. Um, but it's a flawed system because yeah. you're real. You, you're 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 relying on human ears. You just got some guy in a, a office listening, and then and he decides. What, and this kind of it sounds like what they're doing. Right, they're grabbing like random audio samples of people interacting with Siri. Mm-hmm. They're sending that audio out to contractors, and then contractors are listening and determining whether or not the voice assistant performed as it was supposed to. Yeah, but for sex noises and stuff, people aren't asking Siri during that moment. They're like, hey, Siri, what sex position should right. I do next? We're about to do it. You want to listen, Siri? Right. No? Well, and what if you have a really distinctive voice? Like, you. Well, not me? Yeah. I guess I do. You're right. What if I was famous? What if you sound like Tom Brokaw? Series. Doing no, it? Yeah, doing it. Or, uh, or don't, just even NBC like... NBC Nightly News. I'm <laughs> Tom, uh, I'm Tom, uh, 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 uh Brokaw. Uh. <laughs> I bet he does say his own name when he finishes. Uh, uh, <laughs> I bet he does. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't think I care. I don't know. Am I supposed to care? Am I supposed to? Well, see, we're at a point where all of our personal and private information is already out there, no matter what you do. There's so only, there's nothing you can there's do. Really, the only thing there is there is one thing that you can do, and that's uh, throw your phone away and never use one again. Right, and go completely off the grid. Yeah, I have stopped carrying my phone with me everywhere I go. That's I a have start quit doing that. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You get. I don't know why you. Would, I've thought about that too. Oh, no one's going to know that I murdered this person because they left my phone at the house. <laughs> right. They'll think you were at home. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, yeah. probably true. Because <laughs> what lunatic would leave their phone at their house? <laughs> Only a crazy person. Yeah. <laughs> um. How about Russia, though? Boy, they don't. They don't know when to stop, do they? They're never going to stop no, unless not. we act like we care. And we do something about it, but of course well, we are not doing that. We don't have to be on paper ballots, and you got all kinds of companies that own voting machines that are lobbying our government, saying, "Hey, no, don't do the paper ballot thing. That's no good. Why yeah. do we want to do that?" Oh my god! And then you got people that are like, "Oh, oh, well, if you give me a million dollars, I'll make sure it's never paper ballots." Oh, 
<laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Did you see that story I sent you over the weekend Which of the one was that? the activist? Well, Putin rounded up about sixteen hundred distract oh. distractors or oh. detractors. Oh, dude, it's a bad time to be a Moscovite. Yeah. Yeah. They, you know they're doing the same thing over there. The 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 the, the people of Moscow took to the streets because their general uh, elections, city elections for city council and all that stuff, uh, the Kremlin is rigged just like they're rigging elections everywhere else in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. If they're going to do it overseas, they're definitely going to do it at home. So, Oh, yeah. So uh, citizens of Moscow, now they did a protest in 2011 that ended up with like 20,000 people. Mm. When the Kremlin starts catching wind that uh, people in Moscow want to protest, they can't crack down hard enough. Mm -mm. They're going through city centers and they're randomly arresting anyone. Old ladies just sitting on benches. It's nuts. They're cracking people over the head with batons and then just walking over to the next person and just cracking them over the head. It's, it's, I can't even tell you. It's, um, sick. Wow. It's, I haven't heard anything. Uh, about also, that. the opposition leader, uh, was arrested yesterday or, uh, Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. Or Saturday. Uh, and then this opposition leader all of a sudden is taken to hospital with acute uh, w w oh, allerg he's a acute allergic reaction. Uh -huh. yes. He was face, poisoned. Face and neck swollen, uh, can't breathe. And, you know, his colleagues are like, he's never had this before in his right. life. Yeah, his doctor's like, he's not allergic to anything, never yeah. has been allergic to anything. Never. All of a sudden, yeah. in prison, uh -huh. they're going to give you something that you're going to be highly allergic yeah, to. Yeah, everybody's allergic to arsenic. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of the thing, yeah. <laughs> Who's this on line one? It's Groove. How you doing, Hey, Groove. Good morning. What's up? Hello? Yeah, can you hear us? Hold on. Stand by. Let me make sure everything's in the right place. Uh, how about now, Groove? Can you hear us now? I can hear you wonderfully. Can oh. you hear me? Yes, we can. Let's talk. Hey, remember how for years I've had a flip phone out and you laughed at me? Oh. I, uh, <laughs> I, I laugh at any old white guy that's still using a flip phone. But, yeah, so you finally well, got yourself. Quit laughing. <laughs> What'd you get? Quit laughing. What'd you, what'd you get, I Groove? got a smart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's it's a phone. It's Is it an iPhone or Android? No, stop. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's an iPhone. It's an iPhone. Okay, all right. Yeah, yeah. listen. You don't. When someone says what kind of phone, you don't go, well, I don't know. It's a phone. It's an iPhone now, Groove. You've got it. Oh, okay, it's an iPhone. Yeah. You I'm got I'm yourself in. an iPhone. You're in. Hey, there's all kinds I'm of in. You, there's all kinds of games you can play. Uh, I haven't I haven't I haven't good at anything yet, but I'm gonna. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. <laughs> and congratulations! Now the government and Russia knows everything about you. Oh yeah, dude, you've got no secrets yeah, now, well, Groove. So yeah, okay, according, according to Brad, they knew they knew it all anyway. Right. <laughs> Man, I go. You know, when I read about this stuff, I go, "Do I even care? What, there's nothing I can do. It's either not have a phone or just deal with the knowledge the government's got all my information." But that's what they like. They love that of about they do. us. That we're that's so I, lazy. That's what I said. That's we're it. never. But this is what I've said. Our governments now have so much. They, the information our government has on us would make the East Germans blush, Christine. Yeah, but it's not even our government. It's the Russians now, too. Oh, oh It's just it, outrageous. It, it is our government. It 100% is our government and now Russia. That's it's what both. I mean. Yeah. It's both. It's crazy. And big business and everything. We're oh, just a commodity. Facebook was selling, Facebook was selling to, to businesses the ability to target troubled teens. To target suicidal teens. Mm -hmm. Oh, you want to be able to access these uh, thirteen-year-olds that are thinking about killing themselves? We got you covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got that. that yeah. That, that, that's, maybe that's Zuckerberg. They, were they people that could, were trying to help the kids that were nope reaching out to the? the they were world? looking to profit. So what was it like? Stores like Hot Topic. <laughs> Let me see these sad teenagers. All right, seven twenty-one. We'll do dumbass of the day next. There's a, a police who caught a guy. Oh, what is the? <laughs> I love this story. Uh, there's a guy whose tail light was broken and he fixed it, but the cops didn't like the way he fixed uh. it. Uh, fight breaks out on a cruise ship. Uh, firefighters extinguish a fire in an odd place, and a Florida man is pointing fingers uh, for being in trouble with the law. We'll be right back. <laughs> More Frank Show straight ahead on 96.1 KLPX. Here's more Frank on 96.1 KLPX. All right. Uh, 732. Happy Monday, by the way. Hope you had a good weekend. Let's do dumbass of the day. It's all ready to go. Woo. I think you're stupid. Real stupid. He suffered brain damage. Brain, brain, brain damage. Dumbass of the day. 
All right, this happened in Longmont, Colorado. We've all tried different methods of getting around a busted out taillight from red film to red tape or taped on plastic. But a Longmont police sergeant spotted a new one on Monday, a red sports drink. <laughs> Longmont police said they stopped the driver who works for an oil company and is in town every two weeks while he was on his way to get the taillight fixed. They let him go without a ticket and ran into him at a garage later Monday while he was getting the light fixed. On-road vehicles in Colorado must display a red or amber light for their taillight that can be seen from at least 100 feet away in sunlight. While we appreciate the ingenuity of this taillight, this is not a permanent solution. Longmont Fire Police and OEM wrote in a Facebook post, working taillights prevent accidents. Yeah. So this guy had taken a bottle of red Gatorade and duct taped it where the broken taillight was. <laughs> so if the light comes on, it would still glow a, a, red, a, little, a red. little bit. Yeah, yeah, and the thing about that, those bottles aren't red. You need to keep the Gatorade in it for it to be red. And he didn't drink it. Yeah. <laughs> and he took the label off. Yeah. I like this. I mean, and then for the cop to be all like, it's not a permanent solution. Oh, really? I was just going to leave the red Gatorade on forever. <laughs> yeah. I was never going to fix it. Sorry, dummy. Oh, <laughs> who's a dumbass? I love it. The cop. I love Stop it. it. I love it when the obvious is, is pointed out, and that's the salient point. Ah. Oh, hey, you know, this isn't. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think there's duct tape all over it? <laughs> <laughs> How long do you think it's going to stay there? Mm. Idiot. Yeah. Okay, I'll get it fixed. Uh, London, British media reports say six people have been assaulted on board a P&O cruise ship after a passenger dressed as a clown sparked a brawl. Richard Gaisford, an ITV journalist who was on board the cruise ship traveling from Bergen, Norway to Southampton, England, said security staff rushed to the buffet restaurant on board after the late night melee. He tweeted Saturday that the brawl apparently started when a passenger dressed as a clown upset a group of passengers it's got to be much more than that. A P&O crew spokesman said all passengers have disembarked from the Britannia ship and police are investigating. The BBC quoted Hampshire police as saying six people were assaulted in the incident, which took place in the early hours of Friday. Police said two people were arrested. Here's a tweet from Richard. There was blood everywhere. Violent late night brawl on the buffet on board POC cruises. Britannia left staff who intervened injured as passengers used furniture and plates as weapons. Witnesses told me they were so frightened they had to hide as family groups fought. Whoa. Um, these Brits uh, do not know how to drink responsibly. None of them do. I think they're really good at it. I know they do. They're, they're the uh, quite the opposite. There's such a drinking culture in England. Mm -hmm. A lot of it has to do with all the bars being shut down at 11 p.m. Going back to World War II. Right. So you know, 10:30 rolls around and everyone's they, they, you know what they you they know what they do home. they binge. No, they start binging. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so it's uh, developed into this culture of. Always binging, always, every time you drink, you're always binging. Mm. <laughs> Just getting hammered. Yes. Mm. Uh, and guess what? Uh, people all around the world, I think I think they look at the British tourists as the most obtuse, even over Americans a lot of times. I don't know what obtuse means. Stupid. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. No, we're the dumbest by a lot. <laughs> I think the Brits are hated more, though, because they're so drunk and so obnoxious. Mm. It might be that might be. They're not Australians, babe. That, that mm -hmm. might be something you could Google it. Yeah, I will try to Google it. it. <laughs> uh, Springfield. Where, which Springfield? Every state has a Springfield. How am I supposed to know which state this one is? It's the one that uh, the Simpsons is located. In. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, firefighters had to use foam to extinguish a fire in an above-ground swimming pool Monday in the Forest Park neighborhood. A resident was trying to burn sticks and leaves in a fire pit. And used gasoline to light the fire. Always smart. The fire flashed back and caught his gas can on fire. He then threw the burning can into a nearby above ground pool. The flaming gas then spread across the top of the water in the half filled pool, creating a liquid fire. Wow. No one was injured in the fire that occurred shortly before 5 p.m. The pool was heavily damaged in the blaze. Would you look at that? Wow. The, the above ground pool doesn't have a side anymore. Oh, my God. <laughs> How the hell are they going to swim in that pool That's now? It's done. Yeah, you have to That's be a special over. kind of dumbass to be able to set water on fire. How do you mm -hmm. go? Oh, oh, I got an idea. Yeah, I got to burn this stuff. Let's use a gasoline. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. No, Yoli almost burned my house down. 
trying the to same do that. Thing? Yes, same thing. And I, I just, I told him, do not bring gasoline in my home. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. And he's like, it'll be fine. No, don't do that. And what do you th- guys think happened? The ga- the fire jumped out, went inside the gas tank, and it was uh, I'm mayhem. Sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Let's go back. Mm-hmm. Uh, was this gas tank inside of a car? No, no, no. Of course not. Yeah. It was a little gas can. Yeah. Well, metal yeah. or plastic? Uh, plastic, I think. Oh, okay. but very small. Okay. And so, was there not a lot of gas inside? Then? No, thankfully. But yeah. I already knew. I had. I mean, as he's talking, or as I'm talking, I'm saying, "No, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't bring that into my house. Don't do that." And he is still doing it. And I was like, "I'm going to have to physically restrain him." Do, do, so I just went and got a blanket and a and a, and a bucket does, of water. Does Yoey, and standing by. Does Yoey not? Uh, did he not grow up with a with a mom that yelled at him regularly? No, no, no. She didn't start yelling at him and berating him until he was older. Oh, yeah. I see. But no, he started playing with gasoline. Groove just did the same thing yesterday. Apparently, what? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, all right. Stupid. Uh, seven thirty nine. How about you don't mess around with gasoline then? Uh, next time you gotta f- put something on fire. Yeah, gasoline is not how you set stuff on fire is ever. That- uh, Kimlin, will you get some dried out sticks and leaves and then do a little uh, Bear Grylls action? Yeah, yeah, that's how you do it. Okay, you're, you're, so you're not great at starting a fire with a flint and whatever, but keep trying. Just get, get some pitch <laughs> and some wax, anything. A uh, 52 year old Florida man facing burglary charges after being accused of breaking into a Pasco County home with a horse at his side. <laughs> Homeowner Steve Ferguson said, maybe a bicycle or a truck, but a horse? Very surprised. Oh. Ferguson said he thought the Moon Lake area home a year ago, or he bought the home a year ago as an investment property. He plans to remodel and rent it. Ferguson said the home has been burglarized before, so he put up a fence, posted no trespassing signs, and installed security cameras. He called the Pasco County Sheriff's Office on Thursday after he started getting alerts on his phone that showed video of a man on his property. He then headed to the house himself. Upon arrival, I saw the horse running up the street. Whoa. (laughs) By that time, deputies had made contact. According to the arrest report, he actually approached the deputy responding to the burglary call and asked if he'd seen a horse. Hey, have you seen a horse? (laughs) (laughs) He repeatedly told the deputy that the horse had gotten into the yard through a broken fence and he followed it. Oh, that's what he told the cops. (laughs) I followed it. I followed it in. He wasn't stealing it? Yeah, but that's Uh why they've got video of him trying to get in uh, the front door. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Ferguson said nothing was taken, but estimated the damage to the window will cost $100. There's your dumbass of the day. (laughs) Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, say it's a big no for me for now. Uh, I would not be buying snowballs. Freezable underwear that helps men cool off this summer. A new product available on Amazon. Uh, it is, it's, uh, I have not seen this this uh, panties on Shark Tank. There you go. I've been watching a lot of it. There's oh, snow, I really love snowballs. it. Snowballs. You got what you call your snow wedges that you throw in the freezer. Yeah. Uh, it says in under an hour they'll be ready, and then there's some pockets you can slide your snow wedges into that'll cover your boys. I like that picture. And, and, and cool it off. Oh. Um, uh, those are great for wearing when you're flying places if you want to, like, hide your stash somewhere. Oh, yeah? Boom. Outside pocket. Kangaroo pouch. Uh, how long does it take to freeze? Or an hour to freeze, yeah, but how long does it take to right, This is why I'm not buying it. Listen. Okay. Uh, the, it's on Amazon. It's called Snowballs Underwear, and they're selling scientifically backed cooling underwear. Uh, it comes with ice packs that are dubbed snow wedges. Uh, men are able to put these in the freezer before they pop them into a pouch that sits over the groin. Mm-hmm. According to Snowballs, the snow wedges are ready for use after less than an hour in the freezer. After that... They'll keep cool for 30 minutes. But the reviews on Amazon are saying not even 30 minutes, more like 15. And a lot of these reviews are saying these things don't keep my stuff cool so long. You're better off just holding a cold drink between your legs. Right. Whoa. Yeah. So uh, I'm not buying it. The description of the product on Amazon describes the underwear as scientifically proven, (laughs) patent pending, natural fertility solution for men attempting to conceive. Oh, geez. However, the reviews on the U.S. and U.K. Amazon website suggest some are just using as a way to cool off. For yeah, 15 minutes. Yeah. The underwear works great, providing extra support, and it feels really comfortable. Cooling packs help, too, especially on a hot day, said one review. Another said, kept area cool when needed. Uh, uh, however, hmm. others have complained the ice packs didn't keep them cool for long enough. The ice pack, it stays cold for about 15 minutes. You're almost better off holding a cold drink with ice between your legs if you're trying to be inconspicuous. Right. Uh. 
Yeah, until they invent ice packs that last longer than 15 minutes under, like, heat, uh, it doesn't he, matter. The, the only thing that they can invent is, uh, uh, like, an, uh, like, an astronaut suit. Okay, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it just cool, keeps you cool it's all around. It's got air conditioning yeah. inside of it. Yeah. I don't know. You plug in your underwear I, every day. I, if, if I had such a suit and I had to carry a window unit on my back just to stay cool, I would do it. I know yeah. you would. Yeah. Keep you from wetting? Yeah. But how do these, I mean, I just don't know. The ice having it so directly right there, like, wouldn't well, it's not, it? There's going to be some cloth I in between it, right? Yeah. I guess, but I can't even keep an ice pack on my knee for that long, and I wrap it in a towel. Well, yeah, but don't you freeze your sex toys before you use them? No, not. <laughs> not anymore? No, you did say that. Not all the time. Not anymore? No, I mean, I've done it, but I don't do it. And it's uh, fantastic, apparently. Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, it's a good so, time. Uh, yeah, what's your question again, Christine? My, I'm sorry. <laughs> my question. <laughs> is having the cold that uh, uh, ice yeah. right next to yeah, your yeah, business. Yeah, yeah. It's not ice. It just seems too much. It's not ice. Uh, are you familiar with the freezer packs you put in your lunch? No, I have a, yeah, I have exactly. a messed up knee. I've been icing my knee. It's yeah. just two, 15 minutes is a lot. Yeah. To, it gets when, real cold. Well, if I have to ice something, I don't ever put the thing directly on my flesh. Nope, I don't either. Because it scares me. Sure, you're yeah. not supposed to. You're supposed to have a little cloth barrier. And, and these are just little tiny wedges that are smaller than the palm of your hand. So the amount of coolness that they're able to emanate... Yeah. Doesn't last very long, hmm. I guess. I, I would just think it would be too intense to have that kind of cooling. What I'm looking for is a car with a car cold seats. With cold seats. They yeah, have with that. Uh, air refrigerated seats or they whatever. Have that. That's what I want. Well, yeah? I got heated seats. and uh, I have heated seats. I got I've, heated in my wagon, but not cooled. Yeah, I want cooled ones. No, you, Well, rich people have had it for years. Oh, really? Yeah, you get in the nicer cars, the really nice cars, and they have the air conditioning seats. Man, that's going to be my next car. It's I almost bought a car last seats. summer, but I didn't buy the car because the uh, person that owned it always used the heat in the seat, and it melted the leather. Oh. I don't want some melty leather seat where some no. someone's ass sat for years melting leather. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's that's all, that gets real hot. Yeah. Though. Woof. I was just looking at this thing for next segment. I got confused. Oh, let's do it now. Okay. <laughs> uh, four toxic coworkers to avoid. Mm. Uh, you know, coworkers, what? they come in all shapes and sizes. Some you like, some you don't. Yeah, you can't control that, really. No, it's just, uh, you know, you got your home family and your work family. And just like your uh, home family, there's people in it that you're like, eh, I can do without. Mm. Having friends at work is great. Just make sure they're the right friends, Christine. Yep, I agree. These are the four types of coworkers you want to avoid. The first one. <clears throat> Uh, and uh, I just got done telling you a story about how I use this term with my wife on occasion. Oh. Yeah. First type of coworker to avoid the soul sucker. Soul sucker. The Whoa. soul sucker. Now, yesterday, Christina, I just told you off air. Yesterday, my wife bookended her day at the very beginning of it, early, like five thirty in the morning, and at the very end of the day, right before I went to bed, uh, around nine o'clock. Yeah. She bookended her day by nagging me. Just started it and ended it. Started it and ended it. And I even commented, I'm like, nice way to book in your day, babe. (laughs) You know what's funny is that I bet, like, she doesn't even remember, like, what? What do you mean? No. No, no. like, what? No, she knew because she she did last night because yesterday at 530 in the morning when she started nagging me right when her eyes popped open... I looked at her and I go, wait, really? Mm-hmm. Your eyes just popped open and you can't help yourself? <laughs> I just saw something wrong and I had to tell you about yeah, it immediately. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the soul sucker. Someone who asks for a lot of advice and support from you but gives nothing in return. That's also just a friend to avoid in general, not just at work. That's true. <clears throat> um, Brad kind of falls into the soul sucker category. No, you know I don't fall much, under any of these categories. You know how much he uh, asks for advice and support for me and I give it to him? Mm-hmm. And then what do I get in return? I don't know. Nothing is the answer. No, That's what a soul sucker friend no, is. Not nothing. All right, Brad's not a soul sucker. Not it's exactly. Funny, no. It's funny to label him as one, though. Right. Yeah, you wish. If anything, I'm I'm under one of the best coworkers to have, which is not on this list. Oh, I, I was through uh-huh. this to make sure I wasn't one of these coworkers. Here's another coworker to avoid: the martyr. They complain to you all the time about how they have to do other people's work. Or that they're not treated fairly. I stay away from these people all the time. Just, I can't stand a victim. Just be careful because they might be saying similar things about you to other people. It's oh, 100% yeah. they are. The martyr. Yes, I hate that. I can't. There was a guy in the building that um, 
He was off air. Uh huh. But he did a lot of, you know, button pushing. Mm hmm. And he used to go around and brag to people in the building that he's responsible for 80% of all audio that comes out of the radio station. Wow. And he that's a lot. And he used that number 80% because I guess he felt it carried some weight and he, made him feel important. He just made it up. Yeah. It's just did. like an he arbitrary, like, yeah. I'm going to guess. <laughs> yeah. Statistically speaking. Oh, mm -hmm. an idiot. Uh, there's the chit chatter. Catching, mm -hmm. up, catching up after the weekend is one thing, but just stay clear of the person who doesn't know when to stop. I'm going to say every time I leave this room, I get anxiety walking down. I just hope I don't want to meet any. Like, I just go, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Am I you're talk so about? special. You can't be bothered to no, talk to anybody else in the hallway. No. Gee, that's what it feels like. I yeah. have social anxiety. So oh, really? chit chat just freaks me out. Yeah. Like, I just go, I don't know what to say to these. Yeah, I'm, I'm an artist and I'm peculiar as well. <laughs> right. No, I just have anxiety. People are only saying hi. Trust me, they're not going into long conversations with you. They're just <laughs> no, no, they're not. doing pleasantries <laughs> yes. and you just can't even say it. I just be like, yep, hi, yeah. okay, I gotta uh -huh. get out, I uh -huh. gotta go. Yeah, All it's right. weird. All right, so far there's the soul sucker, the martyr, and the chit chatter. And then uh, fourth, fourth uh, co-worker you want to avoid, the know-it-all. They don't uh, even think they ever need anybody's input. Then when things go wrong, they don't own up to it. And they even might make you their scapegoat. Unfortunately, a lot of bosses tend to be know-it-alls. Oh, that's true. Do you feel like you fall under any one of these categories, Frank? Frank, me, yes. I'm the soul sucker. I'm the martyr. I'm the chit-chatter. I'm the know-it-all. You're that's all what, for? That's why people in this building don't talk to me. They no, don't like me. That's not true. And I'm sorry? Not, I don't think that you're any of these things. That's why either. you're still here, Christine. Right. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I like you because you don't do a lot of chit chat. <laughs> you don't complain to me all the time. Yeah, and when you think you know it all, I always make sure to tell you that you're wrong and that I know it all. Yeah, yeah. You, that might be something that you are. You but. tread lightly on the know it all tip. Maybe a little bit martyr. If there was a, a like, a, if you could put it, combine them a little bit, uh, I think I combined all four of them. Well, I know, but I would take one and three out of the equation. You're not a soul sucker. No. You're not a chit chatter, for sure. In fact, actually, some people try to just have meaningful conversations with you and it, that you immediately shut off. Like, well, nope, gotta and go walk look away. at yeah. like Homer Simpson and just fades <laughs> in the bushes yeah, and yeah. sneaks back. Like, I gotta go. Uh, Martyr, do I do a lot of complaining, Brad? Uh, on air a little bit, yeah. Well, it's different. Yeah. We're on air. We're trying to entertain. Yeah, you're the on air martyr. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, well let's talk about off air. Oh, I do a lot of complaining off air too. Yeah. <laughs> and the know it all part is just a mask that I wear. Yeah. Because I'm super insecure because I got an uneducation, uh, an unconstitutional education. Unconstitutional education. Oh my God. I was yeah. like, you got an uneducation too? <laughs> I got uh -huh. an unconstitutional edu education. Uh, Supreme, uh, Kentucky State Supreme Court declared the state's education system unconstitutional in 1989. The year, oh, the year I graduated high school. Hell yeah, it did. <laughs> yes, you're right. <sighs> um, is there a, a coworker, the always hungry coworker? That is what we are right now. That's We're what starving. I, um, I don't care about anything I know. else. Why didn't we bring food? I mean, I brought my dumb little pistachios, but oh. I had them at by the time I got and, here. And you also didn't share it. No, either. they were almost gone. You know, I can't share yeah. pistachios. Well, I can't do it because you're selfish. I, I mean, get it. If I brought more, yes. Yeah. Well, if you brought more, you just eat more <laughs> and, and, and share less. No. I Share a pistachio. I've got one left. Look at yeah. I got one, one left. It's like one. A, yeah, the one that won't open. Yeah, and who eats <laughs> one pistachio? <laughs> Look, it's got a little seam down it. Now you can open it now, Frank. Well, then why, if it's got a seam, why didn't you open it? Because like my nails, I chewed my nails off, and Those, I can't get it. You don't use your teeth to open up pistachio no, shells. Uh uh. What I you, don't. What are you new? Yeah, I what guess kind of, so. What kind of pistachio shell rook are you? I'll just start slobbering all over it. I bet I just, you do. I make a lot of. That usually with makes my mouth. most nuts open up for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, I make Brad, a lot of slime. See how Brad's doing. No, I know it's doing, real. He thinks it's clever blue humor. Yeah, <laughs> but that's also true though. Is it clever blue humor? <laughs> no, it's not. Is it, it is true no. though. No, it's true. But can it's it not, be funny because right. it's true? No, oh, funny because it's true. Yeah, but you know what? You're being a soul sucker right now. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm just adding agreed. number one. I to just this. agreed with you. I said funny because it's true. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so, hard. It's hard to tell. Why? Wait. Why am I being a soul sucker when I'm agreeing with you once on a delivered line from you? It was your tone at first. I thought you were going to throw me under the bus immediately for you doing a uh, double entendre, uh, is what I did, and <laughs> <laughs> and I thought you were going to soul suck me. 
Well, yeah. I know, but I but I did. I, I agreed with you. Well, good. Thank you. Thank you for not sucking my soul today. Uh, yeah. You know, you know what it is, Brad. I'll tell you. I told Christine off air. I call my wife the soul crusher. And if I do any soul sucking, it's because I get so much soul crushing at the house. Yeah, you need some soul in return. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so, so drained of your own right. soul. Yeah. So I'm so soul crushed at my house all the time that all I want to come in here and do is smash souls. Well, I have a lot of soul, so you could have some of mine. Christine, you don't mind if I smash a little soul every now and then, do you? No, whatever. <laughs> You uh, gotta do it. I better not hear any complaining. Whatever either. keeps you alive. If honey. I hear any complaining from either of you about me smashing souls. <laughs> no, you know what, Frank? Let's God. turn off the mic so we can do some chit chat. I'm gonna uh, ask you about your day. Oh, oh no. Yeah. How are you feeling? I got nothing. Hey to buddy. Say. Yeah, I got Good nothing. Good to see you. Hey you, pay attention. Back to the Frank Show now on ninety six point one KLPX. Yeah, hey, hey, check this out. I just stumbled on this little bit of information. A new study says 28% of delivery drivers have eaten some of your food. Wait, you know what? I'm what? Over, yeah, I'm over this already. How much? Uh, 28% of delivery drivers have eaten some of your food. Oh, man. Just stop. Right? Just, you know what? Just go get it yourself, you lazy F. Oh, jeez. Just enough. Okay. Oh, oh okay, okay. Oh, oh, I see. I want to go get the pizza myself. It'll cost me $14. But if I want to have it delivered, it's going to cost me thirty four. Right. Yeah. And so, there's going to be stuff missing and, off the and, top. And there's going to be like a, you know a, yeah. a, a few uh, pepperonis. pepperonis are gone. Yeah. You ate a wing or f- some fries or uh, whatever. You can't eat a wing because you get a count. Like if you want yeah. twelve wings, there well, better true. be twelve wings. Ever wondered if a delivery driver took a bite of your food while on delivery? A new study says your fears might be real. New study done by U.S. Food. Shows the habits of both consumers and delivery drivers. The study shows 28% of delivery drivers have taken food from a customer's order. 54% of delivery drivers polled said they uh, are also often tempted by the smell of food they deliver to customers. Let me tell you something, mm-hmm. Christine. A couple Saturdays ago, and I live in Marana. Yeah. So I had to drive to Roger uh, and Oracle. Oh, yeah. To Lucky, Out there. Wow. To, to Lucky Wishbone to get fried chicken. Wow. I had th- then I had to drive from Oracle and Roger to Cortero and Silver Bell. Mm-mm. About fifteen to twenty minutes, depending no on how I fast I spin. Uh, uh, oh. On how fast I drive. Now, when I got home, the fries were all gone. Yes, those fries you can't drive twenty minutes and then expect them to be good. Mm-hmm. They're only going to be good when they're hot and fresh, and yeah. so they get all eaten by the time I get home. Mm-hmm. The fried chicken is fine, but I understand the temptation. Because I'm driving for 20 minutes with fried chicken in my car? Yeah. Forget it. Yep. That's hard. That's why I don't deliver food. I couldn't make it. Nope. I'd eat. Uh, Maybe we should try to buy an extra something like, uh, and, and throw in an extra side of fries for my Uber driver. <laughs> for my driver. Yeah. Just hand it to him and tell uh, him, Here's, please just don't touch him. The new food study shows that 17% of customers complained that their food was not warm or fresh. Mm-hmm. 16% complained their food was delivered late. Customers weren't the only ones with complaints about food delivery. The study says 60% of delivery drivers complained of receiving little or no tip. That right there is why I always give a fiver. Oh, always. Always, if, mm. I, if I can. And if I can, I don't order. Right. But yeah. if I'm getting delivered uh, food to my house, and it's because I've delivered before, Christine. Yeah, I know what it's too. like. Yeah, I like the tip. Is it, you know, I've delivered pizza, and then you got somebody that's giving you a dollar and think they're doing you a huge favor. Well, I mean, if it's all they can afford. This was 1989. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, come on. So, if it's all they can afford, they shouldn't be ordering. Well, that was a dollar. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, 39% of, of delivery people complained that the customer's instructions were unclear. Huh. Uh, 12, 1,500 American adults who have used food delivery apps, including Uber Eats, Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, uh, were surveyed. Also surveyed 500 American adults who identified as having worked as a deliverer for one of those food delivery apps. There was a guy that did, did some study for the Times or did a study for the Times where he spent three days as a delivery person. Yeah. And recorded all of it with a GoPro. No. And, all, you know, it was like doors opening while he's on his bike, right in front of car doors opening right in front of him. Kind of dangerous. You know, yeah, super dangerous. <laughs> right. Of course, it was all being done in Manhattan. Yeah. On and a on bicycle. a bicycle. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't think I'd want my car to smell like that. Whatever people want to eat, right? Yeah. Uh, it would bug me. And and I and I have used one of these delivery apps before, mm-hmm. and I did have a person deliver food to me that I was pretty certain lived in their car. 
Oh, my God, really? So I got to think maybe they were very tempted to reach in there and grab a morsel. Yeah, they might have been with their dirty hands mm-hmm. or whatever. Oh, geez. Yeah, I always look at uh, the fingernails first. Uh, if there's dirt under the fingernails. Man, I love getting delivery on payday. Uh, That's like my thing. I get yeah. like Chinese food well, or pizza or like something. Like I was just saying, stop being a lazy F. Yeah, yeah. just, just go, go get, get the food yourself. Ah. You can't trust people. I guess. Remember in the 80s and 90, early 90s when you used to go to the uh, like a Subway food place and they were making sandwiches with no latex gloves? Oh, yeah. Those are the days. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mind that. No, I love when they use the gloves and they still, and they like... Touch everything. Yeah, they, they like, handle the cash with the gloves on. Yeah, yeah, and then they go back to making more sandwiches. Yeah. I've talked to them about this and said, all you're protecting is yourself from my sandwich and the money. Yeah. You're not helping me. Uh, you're doing it wrong. Yeah.